first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for, for coming out today. The reason I wanted to have this press conference today is it's almost a year from the date that we had a press conference last year where we announced that we were going to form a burglary task force. If you remember the reason we did that, it was because we were having an increase in residential burglaries. The first quarter of last year, 2012, the Sheriff's Office saw a 54% increase in residential burglaries. If you remember, we had children hiding under beds as people broke into the doors. We also had grandmothers being thrown out on the floor. The net result of that burglary task force was some phenomenal work done across this region by the Sheriff's Office, Spokane Police Department, and all our partners. In the first three months of the burglary task force, they arrested 285 individuals, and the that resulted in that 54% increase declining by 40 some percent. We ended up in 2012 with a 7% increase in burglary, which is phenomenal based on where we were going into that the first part of the year. If you compare the first quarter of this year with the first quarter of last year, we see a 53% decrease in residential burglary in Spokane County unincorporated area. As a total for burglary between the two years, in the first quarter, we saw a 15% decrease in, in burglaries across the board. In the unincorporated, that was a 41% decrease across the board in all burglaries. The folks out there that work for the Sheriff's Office and, and all the law enforcement jurisdictions in this area have done a great job and we can do more. That's why I asked the sheriffs and the chiefs of our region to join with me today so we can talk about how we address the property crimes issue in the Spokane County region and the Kootenai County region because their, their criminals are are criminals. They're the same people committing those crimes across the jurisdictional borders. We've worked very hard with the public in order to achieve these results because it wasn't just law enforcement that drove these crime rates down. We had a two-pronged approach. We formed a burglary task force, then we reached out to the citizens of Spokane County and they started reporting their crime in a greater volume and in such a fashion that we were able to actually disrupt bur burglaries and arrest people breaking into people's houses as those crimes were being committed. So a lot of the, the thanks that I give today is to the citizens of Spokane County for taking the time to report the crime and for us to be able to address those issues. I'm going to turn it over to uh, the chiefs and let them discuss some of the issues that they're dealing with and at the end uh, we'll be able to take a couple of questions and we'll move on from there. Chief? Well, thank you. Um, I was pleased that uh, I received a phone call from the sheriff to ask to be a part of this. Um, while our property crimes in the city of Cheney remain uh, relatively low, uh, the problem that we do deal with is all theft. And so a car will be taken in Cheney and then dropped off in Spokane and vice versa. When a burglary is in fact committed in Cheney, a lot of the times the burglars will leave a car, dump a car, take another car with the property, come into town here and either sell the property or pawn it. So being a part of a task force, we can organize, organize our efforts along with the various jurisdictions and so that we're not all doing the same thing but in different places. And should we have a string of um, um, serial burglaries as an example, we'll be able to call upon this task force to come into the city of Cheney and provide us the assistance that we need in order to make sure that we get a successful conclusion to the investigation. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Brian Asmus from Liberty Lake Police Department. And again, I'd like to thank the Sheriff for inviting our department to be part of this task force because the criminal element that we're dealing with doesn't recognize the jurisdictional boundaries um, that our cities do. And so by us working together, I think we're going to have a greater impact on property crimes in our region. Uh, Liberty Lake, um, we don't have a lot of crimes against persons, types of crimes, but a lot of property crime occurring in our jurisdiction. Uh, burglaries, vehicle prowls, open garage burglaries, and those types of things. So 
uh, with the information and intelligence that the Sheriff's Office is able to provide to intelligence-led policing, we're going to be able to use that to participate with the Sheriff and our other law enforcement partners uh, to have a significant impact on property crimes in our community. Hi, I'm Lee Bennett with the Airway Heights Police Department, and just like John and Brian and Sheriff Knezovich have said, these criminals know no boundaries. They just float amongst all of our jurisdictions. In the city of Airway Heights, last quarter of, or last part of December to the first quarter of this year, we've seen a significant amount of property crimes. It's almost gone off the chain. However, in working with the Spokane Police Department, detectives and the Sheriff's property uh, crimes task force we're identifying those folks that just aren't preying on airway heights in our citizens and businesses but throughout the county and with this asset that we have at our uh, that we're um, able to rely on I, I believe that that we will start making a dent in those types of uh, property crimes. <coughs> Lieutenant Andy Boyle, King County Sheriff's Department, and on behalf of our new Sheriff Ben Wolfman, I'd like to thank you for inviting us as well. Uh, currently what we're experiencing is copper wire and metal thefts off the field. Uh, the other night somebody got away with 1,600 feet of this. Uh, and that's the hot topic that we have, but just across the state line or other pivot lines in Spokane County, I know up north in Cheney and Liberty Lake they have them as well. So what we're experiencing, they're going to experience as well. We want to work together. We have been doing that for a while. So thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you, Sheriff, and thank you for the other chiefs and representatives of Kootenai County for coming. Uh, I certainly applaud uh, Sheriff Nesovich is uh, putting together this group of people. Uh, bringing us together really is a symbol to the public because, as one of the other chiefs said, we work together every day. Uh, we share information every day. Uh, problems in Airway Heights or Liberty Lake or Kootenai County are really our problems here in uh, Spokane County and Spokane City. Um, as you all know, in January we started our ComStat process, uh, looking at data uh, every day within 24-hour cycles to try to identify those individuals, uh, their activities and places that they're most active, and then focusing patrol resources, investigative resources, and specialized units um, on those, those areas. What you're seeing in Spokane City, uh, particularly in the past month, is a decrease in property crime. Uh, for this week on Monday, we, we discussed the past 28 days and you see a 3% reduction in property crime citywide. Uh, if you go neighborhood by neighborhood, and I would urge you to go to our website where our ComStat uh, report is available for everyone to, to look at, you see individual neighborhoods where property crime as well as overall crime is going down. And as you know, downtown, where we've dedicated a number of officers, we're seeing in the, an average from the beginning of the year 15 to 70 percent, 17 percent decreases. So clearly, the sheriff's idea of using data, bringing law enforcement together, uh, and being very strategic about how we focus our, our patrol forces, our investigative forces, um, is incredibly successful and useful. Last night we had a great result. Uh, we had a woman, uh, who, an elderly woman, who somebody broke into her house. Uh, she was able to hold uh, that individual that day. She in fact fired a warning shot. Uh, but our crime analysts had predicted that that area, specifically that block, was the most probable target at that time of day uh, for another burglary, uh, an occupied home burglary, which is uh, incredibly scary. So we had patrol resources, we had our canine officers in that area, uh, and as a result, uh, when 911 got called, we were able to respond very quickly and make the apprehension. So what the sheriff's talking about, what my counterparts are talking about, it works, and I think we're going to see region-wide a decrease uh, in property crime because of a concerted law enforcement effort. You know, one thing I, I would like to point out is we can identify these folks and we can arrest them. The problem is we're not getting significant sentences out of our arrests. An individual that has pretty much plagued Spokane Valley, a, a teen, were arrested last July. 
They received 90 days for five felony convictions, burglary convictions. The city police department arrested them in January of 2013, and we just arrested them again, and we're looking at eight, I believe, total counts of burglary on this on this team. It's a a a woman and, and a male team. Just how many times do we have to arrest somebody before we actually get rid of our repeat offenders? Chief Straub and I have talked very much about identifying a way of dealing with the repeat offender because we get a huge amount of reduction in crime by taking out those that are committing the most of our crime. Since those individuals have been arrested and another group uh, committing uh, commercial burglaries, we've seen a 56 percent decrease this month in the valley because of, uh, of those arrests. And we only arrested seven people. That tells you the effect that these repeat offenders are having on this community. What we need to do, and, and Chief Straub and I really need to get together and go and speak with our judges and get them on board with a, a project that you know, has been called Ceasefire, High Point Model. But it's a model where we identify these individuals, we give them a chance to get out of, out of the crime element, or we send them away for a very long time, period of time. That is what we need to focus on because we can continue to arrest people and be very successful, but as long as they're getting right back out, we're not going to be very, very successful. Um, I have Lieutenant John Knowles in the room with me today. John's task is going to be contacting all these jurisdictions that you see with us, and we're going to put together the framework and the analytical piece of this so we can all be effective in reducing this property crime issue. Intelligence-led policing works. I have no doubt about it. We started it in 2007 and the Spokane Police Department actually has a very long history in that. Chief Roger Bragdon actually was one of the forerunners of this model. And Roger and I have, stay in contact, and Roger's actually at, in part helping John and my team restructure IOP, we're calling it IOP Next Gen, and we're going to make it a stronger IOP-based model. And we also have Region 9 Intelligence Group that we're going to add, add more vigorously into that to pull all the data within this region into one one area so we can send that out and make sure that we're reducing crime. Questions? I think we've had two instances in the last week in the city. We've got the lady last night, we've got the guy last week shooting the, the car thief. Where people maybe aren't confident that the police are going to come and they're taking matters into their own hands. Is that a concern? And then how do you tell the community we're going to be there? You know, sometimes you just need to wait for it. I'll answer, answer that and, and I'll, I'll let my partners uh, also. Uh, that's a concern I've been hearing for two straight years now. Um, and the answer is, it works when you give us a call. It really does. The numbers we show from one year show that when you're engaged, you the, the citizen are engaged, we can reduce crime. But we have to also fulfill our commitment. If you call, we have to be able to, to respond. Yeah, I agree 100% with what the sheriff said. I think, um, you know, <clears throat> and I'm going to go back just like you know, this is a, a big topic of discussion these days. Um, my ur urban legend comment, right? Um, the purpose of that comment was to say that the Spokane Police Department has been in the game of investigating property crime for many, many years, right? Um, I did not say, although it appeared that way, that the property crime unit was eliminated, right? Um, what I said is that the urban legend was that we weren't investigating property crime. So I think, first of all, everybody needs to know, um, both locally in the city and regionally, that SPD has been and continues to be in the game. Right now, we have about 22 officers uh, in either our patrol anti-crime unit, our targeted crime unit, um, <coughs> the Property crime unit is, is still there. It's, it's been merged with fraud uh, because fraud is also a form of property crime. Identity theft is a 
form of proctor crime. So we have 22 officers dedicated to this initiative, right? Um, and so what we ask people is to call and report crime, any crime, not just proctor crime. But realize that we have to take, just like all of my, my partners and, and colleagues do, the most serious crimes and the crimes in progress first, right? So if there's an active crime happening, we're going to come and we're going to come quickly. Um, if you come home from vacation and you find your home burglarized, still serious, you were still victim, victimized, that shouldn't occur anywhere, you know, in any of our jurisdictions, we will come. Um, but obviously the response is going to be a little bit slower because we have to take the things that are in the queue um, that are really uh, of consequence to public safety. Now, if you look at the two instances, um, without going into a lot of detail, because one of them is certainly under investigation, kind of different responses, right? Um, different circumstances. One, you have the person inside um, this woman's house. Um, she takes action. Uh, she uh, fires a warning shot holds him in the house at bay, gets in touch with 911, the police respond in a very quick response, right? Um, so, you know, having a firearm in your house for personal protection, I guess we got to see the value of that last night. Um, the other circumstance, as I said, I don't really want to comment on um, because it's still an ongoing investigation. I think there's some pieces that have to come together before we can hire the prosecutor to comment on it further. One thing I'd, I'd point out is the case I told you about, the, the man-woman team. The reason that uh, case was broke was because somebody took the time to come to the Valley Precinct and tell us about what was going on. It's that type of citizen engagement that is, has been very successful for us. Over the year, actually it's been over the last three years, we've, we've expanded our email trees. I'm, I have emails coming from multiple housing uh, groups, associations within Spokane County. They tell us what's going on. We forward that to John's team, and they start working those. And very, in very short order, we're arresting those folks. It's really the battle in, in reference to these crimes is won at the neighborhood level. And that's by involving that neighborhood to help us with, with those crimes. Um, so we all... I don't think there's very many uh, parts of, of Spokane County law enforcement that have a lot of manpower. Uh, I believe the chief's down almost 40. I'm down 32 deputies. And that's made it a, a real struggle for us. In my opinion, public safety is our number one concern. And that's where it should be. I have a question. You said, <coughs> Chief Strzok, uh, you said that... Um, I'm Mike Craig from the spokesman. We've met before. You said you have 22 officers assigned to you. Does that include your neighborhood resource officers? And if you combine the three major agencies, how many personnel are assigned to this effort? So, first of all, right, you have to look at property crime and crime generally as really a corporate mission. Right? Our, our job as law enforcement is to reduce crime and to keep our community safe. So. The advantage of creating a task force or specialized unit is to focus a group of individuals on a specific problem, right? But the sustainable crime reductions come from having the whole agency involved. So when I say we have 22 people looking at property crime, fraud, identity theft, um, and other quality of life violations, that's their sole mission, but they're also looking at crime overall. Our patrol forces, all of our forces that are out there every day are doing two things, right? Preventative patrol and responding to 911 calls and, I'm, and the preventative patrol is directed patrol based on intelligence, right? Patterns and trend analysis. So it, it really is a corporate, organizational, departmental level. I think what you see today is all of us coming together saying we all share the same problem and so we're, we're going to use our collective resources our collective intelligence sharing to attack a problem that's affecting all of our citizens, right? Um, and so that's what you see. So it's really the whole department. So neighborhood conditions unit, yeah, they're involved. And one of the things that we've done uh, here, and we, we are doing um, pretty regularly now, is looking at where's that property going back to, right? Do we have houses in neighborhoods 
that are problematic and are chronic um, sources of calls for police services. Are these the places where stolen property is going back to? So I think just last week um, we covered a, a, a whole bunch of jewelry uh, in a location, right? Because we followed the path of where that burglary uh, ended up in, if you will. Uh, and now we look at those problem houses and say, do we need to get rid of the people that occupy them? So we work with the owners. Um, if it's the owner that's causing the problem, do we make efforts to, in essence, seize that property? Right, because especially if we can show that the property is part of the criminal process, if it was purchased through ill-gotten gains. So we're taking a very holistic approach to this versus saying, we're just going to chase bad guys around, right? And, and what you're seeing last night, kind of being there, you saw on 29th Street, probably a month and a half ago, a commercial burglary pattern where we watch the pattern develop put surveillance teams in the areas, and this is the type of thing we can do with a task force like this. We see the pattern growing, we put officers there, we predict it's going to be location A or location B, and it turned out that it was location A based on our analysis and we were able to make the arrest. Can I follow up on that? What about the downtown area that was mentioned in this mm -hmm. week's so news release, and I noticed there was some activity, pretty intense activity last week and evening around the bus station? Yeah, I think what you're going to see on a very regular basis uh, downtown is a multifaceted approach to that, that area, right? Uh, and when I say multifaceted, it's not just the police, and I think this is something that the sheriff talked about quite eloquently. The solution to crime problems and quality of life problems is not just a police issue. We need the courts involved. Uh, what you saw downtown last week was you saw um, our animal control people involved. You saw a juvenile and adult probation involved you saw the police involved. What you will see going forward is also representatives from Frontier Behavioral Health involved. Because one of the things, again, that the sheriff talked about was this cease fire uh, concept. And the idea there is to give offenders a chance. You want to stay in the game and be criminals? That's fine. It's a series of business transactions. You do the crime. We'll arrest you. We'll do this until you get sick of it. We're not going to go away. We're going to keep coming after you. On the other hand, if you want to get out of the game and get connected to services, we'll make sure that that happens for you. And so downtown, what you're going to see is that integration of the faith-based community going forward, the integration of uh, our mental health uh, colleagues to help connect some of these folks that are hanging out downtown uh, to services so that it doesn't just become we arrest you, we summon you, um, and it just kind of contributes to this whole um, washing in and out of, of the criminal justice system, which clearly um, is not having an effect. We need to, to deal with it on multiple issues. And Mike, uh, for the Sheriff's Office, you asked the, uh, how many? Yes. It's the entire agency. We would not have been the successful this year if it wouldn't been for the entire agency being involved. Our patrol group really has been phenomenal in arresting a lot of these burglars. Um, Lieutenant Knowles can tell you that we were having the same issue that the chief was having uh, down in the Fancher area as far as, as red, our uh, commercial burglaries. It was the patrol unit that set out there with the information being provided by our analytics unit and they're the ones that finally broke those cases and put those people in jail. Ever since they went to jail, I believe that was like March 5th, as of March 29th, we've had zero commercial burglaries in that area because of the pressure put on by the entire agency. So this isn't just one little piece of the agency working this. It's the entire agency with every agency in this community throwing everything we have at this problem uh, because the ultimate goal is to make our community safer. Because the safer this community is, the more businesses come and locate here. Any other questions? I think just for the citizens, I mean, aside from calling you and, and reporting crime, um, what else can we do to keep ourselves from becoming victims? Join neighborhood watches, join COPS, SCOPE, all those, all those community-oriented policing efforts that we have in this area. If you want to be involved, we have a lot of work for you to do. I think the other thing, too, is see something, do something, say something. Right? The, that kind of East Coast model that, that developed out of terrorism. You know, 
we need to be stewards of our neighborhoods and stewards of our neighbor's property. So if you see something that's weird going on in your neighbor's yard or in your neighbor's house, call the police. Don't just sit there and wait for the neighbor to tell them, tell them it's a bummer to be you, right? Call us so that we can come. So we would encourage, don't just take care of your own property, take care of you know, your neighbor's property as well. This is a community problem, and the only way it's going to be resolved is for the community to help and, and get engaged from our side, from every side of the community. It, that's how we end this issue. Because we're seeing stats that go back a year, but those of you who have been around this community for a long time, are, I talk to people who have lived here their whole lives who say, it's worse, it's never been like this, it's never happened when I was a kid. This never, are we that much worse off, or is that just the perception? Maybe we're doing a better job reporting it. I have the st statistics on that, and we're pretty much where we've been for the last decade. Um, you had a, a, a dip in around 2004 when Crime Check went away. Crime Check was an amazing tool for this community because a lot of crime was reported through that, that system. You see the dip in 2008 when Crime Check comes back, you see that crime spike right back up. So. When you adjust all that for the crime check dip, and I think that's what chief, the chief and I call it, uh, we're right across the board for the last decade, it's pretty flat. Um, and I think you could probably go back further than that and probably see the same trend. Sheriff, the uh, rates per thousand, though, is particularly in the city of Spokane, are way over any other location, and many other locations in the country as well, it's way above the statewide average. How do you explain that? It's got to be more than just a crime check. Yeah. I'm going to let the chief deal with that one because that's a city question. A city question. <laughs> I, you know, again, I think the sheriff and I and, and our colleagues would say the same thing, right? This can't just be a police issue. And, and, and so what you have is societal issues, right? We have um, a large part of our population um, that is below the poverty line. Right? So we have very poor people that live in the city, in the county, and, and in our jurisdictions, right? Um, so clearly poverty is a driver. Um, I was down, you brought up the, um, the bus terminal the other day. We were down there, we're, we're talking to some of the folks on, on the street, and this young woman walks up to us, and she's talking about uh, the smoking enforcement that, that's going on. And she said, you know, we started talking to her, and we said, how old are you? And she said, I'm 18. And we said, oh, okay. And she said, I have a, a child, and I'm pregnant. And she lights up a cigarette to talk to us. And we're like, well, what are you, you know, why are you hanging out here? Do you have a job? Are you in school? No, I can't. I'm not in school. I want to go back to school. I'm waiting for my boyfriend to come back. Well, not that she's a criminal, but I think she's a statement about a, a, a large segment of our community it's in dire need of services. One thing that the sheriff talks well, about quite regularly is the fact that the jail has turned into one of the largest mental health facilities in the state of Washington. Well, that's a problem that we as a community, we as a criminal justice system, we as a mental health community have to deal with. So you have poverty, you have low education. We have a huge meth problem in this community. We have a huge drug addicted uh, yeah, <clears throat> part of our population, and unfortunately, and the sheriff and I were on a panel a week or two ago, um, we have so many people that have double issues. They have mental health issues, and they have drug and alcohol dependency issues. So when we talk about crime phenomena, right, and a lot of the crimes that we're talking about, these property crimes, are driven by those type of societal issues. And so the police are doing their part, right? We're here today talking about another initiative. The sheriff raised some very good points about how we need to work better with the court system, how we need to work with the mental health community, how neighbors have to help in this process. And I think this is good. There are an awful lot of conversations going on in our city and in the county right now at multiple levels about how we come together to deal with not just the crime problem, but a lot of these societal problems. And you, you, you mentioned statistics, and unless you really dive in to understand what the statistics say, all they are is really numbers. Uh, because I can tell you that right here are some of your safest communities in the state of Washington. 
you know, uh, Airway Heights, Liberty Lake, and Cheney. Um, they, they, when you compare them, they're doing very well. The unincorporated area of Spokane County, we're the second safest in the state, the unincorporated areas. As far as violent crime, we're number four worst in, uh, in property crimes. So you have to take a look at the to totality because when you look at the bottom line and you see that index number, that is an, is an aggregate of every jurisdiction in, in the community. But if you pull it out, we have very much success in, in a lot of areas of our, our community. We just need to make sure that we're working all together to make sure that every area in our community is, is, is safe and has the opportunity to be, be that safe. So, you know, I challenge you, instead of just looking at the numbers, when they come out next, sit down with the Chief and I, and we'll break it out for you. Sit down with all of us, we'll break those out for you, and you can understand exactly what those numbers mean to the community at large. Take a look at our website, the CompStat reports yeah. on a regular basis. You'll see, yeah. you'll see fluctuations. Some weeks they're up, some weeks they're down. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for, for coming by, and uh, I thank my partners for being part of the effort. I really think together we can make a safer community. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you.